the Madison Police Department Honor Guard presents the flags and the DSU Concert Choir leads us in the singing of the National Anthem. Please be seated. As the president of Dakota State University, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the fall 2009 commencement. Our December commencements are always special because it happens at a time of year that holds for most of us special memories and feelings. In fact, we are able to use some of those symbols of the season here in the Fieldhouse as decorations for this kind of an event. It is also a very hectic time of year with lots of preparations and activities associated with the season. In the midst of all this activity, I hope that this commencement ceremony will give you a chance to pause, reflect, and celebrate the accomplishments of this group of men and women who will graduate this morning. In a few minutes, the DSU Choir will perform a song that has special meaning to me as the choir sang this song at my inauguration some five years ago. The title of the song is The Journey. I hope today that the words of this song will hold special meaning for the graduates and the family and the friends and the supporters who have all been a part of their journey. At various times and on various occasions, Dakota State University has utilized the phrase a journey worth taking. Today we will celebrate your journey and recognize the persistence, determination, and accomplishments that have brought you to the end of this stage of the journey. Just a few weeks ago I had a wonderful opportunity to participate in a journey that took me to the other side of the globe. I was invited and participated in a trip to China. In addition to visiting with universities and students in China, I had the chance to visit several places that have special importance to the Chinese people. One of the most familiar and probably most famous was the Great Wall of China. There were several moments as I climbed the steps and walked along the wall that the historic significance of this place had me pause in awe of this human accomplishment. I want to share with you one other special moment that will hold meaning for the graduates and for many of in the audience. From the Great Wall of China, 
on the other side of the world, I stopped and sent a text message to my two sons and instantaneously received communication back from them. It is without a doubt a smaller and more accessible world than at any time in history. And this fact will affect your continuing journey more than any of us can begin to imagine. My greatest hope is that your journey here at Dakota State University has been that journey worth taking and that DSU has prepared you for this new world and for the journeys that lay ahead. This is my first opportunity to say congratulations. It will not be my last this morning. So I am pleased to have some honored guests with us that I want to introduce. On the stage today is our um, Board of Regents representative, Regent Dean Krogman, and a representative from our Alumni Association, Mr. Lauren Larson. They will be more formally introduced later. In the audience, we have a special guest, and that's State Representative Dr. Gerald Lang, who is a former member of the faculty here, is with us. Representative Lang, thank you. Now, I am particularly and quite honestly personally honored and pleased to welcome our speaker today. I had the chance to participate in the interview process that brought Dr. Warner to South Dakota, so I have a sort of a personal investment in him being here. Dr. Jack Warner began his duties as Executive Director of the South Dakota Board of Regents in July of this year. Prior to this position, Dr. Warner spent seven years as Commissioner of the Rhode Island Board of Governors for Higher Education and previously spent 32 years in the Massachusetts public higher education system. He is past president of the National Association of Student Personnel Administrators and a former member of the New England Student Affairs Think Tank. He currently serves as vice chair of the State Higher Education Executive Officers Organization. Dr. Warner holds a doctorate of education in educational administration from Boston College, a master's of education in student affairs administration in higher education from Springfield College, and a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology for the University of Vermont. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jack Warner. I always have to lower this. Thank you very much, President Knowlton. Uh, distinguished members of the platform party, Regent uh, Krogman, Representative Lang, faculty and staff, and most importantly, graduating students and your friends and family. I'm honored and pleased to uh, be able to say a few words this morning, and I promise you I will say a few words. Uh, I'm reminded of what Henry VIII told each one of his wives, I won't keep you long. <laughs> you should also know that uh, I teach from time to time at Boston College, and you know I just got my student evaluations back. And one student said this about me, if I had 20 minutes to live, I would like to spend those minutes in Dr. Warner's class. I thought, pretty good evaluation, wouldn't you think? This is because every minute with him is like an hour. <laughs> so for the next 10 to 12 hours, I'll be speaking to you this morning. It's a very special day and all of you should be proud of it. You are to be congratulated. Earning a college degree, whether undergraduate or graduate, will produce great advantages for you. We know that our college graduates earn higher wages, and that this earning premium has been increasing every year and steadily since 1973. It used to be that you could do quite well without a college degree in this country, not so, and that pattern has been consistent for well over 35 years. They enjoy better health. They are less likely to lose their jobs. Uh, this is an important feature of today's deep recession which has been very much a recession on workers that do not have college degrees and, and credentials. The unemployment rates for those with college degrees are far lower than those without them in this recession. Are less likely to be on public assistance. 
educate their own children to higher levels, show higher levels of civic engagement, and rank higher on numerous quality of life indicators. In fact, if you're receiving an associate degree here today, you can expect to earn about one and a half to two times uh, over a lifetime what a high school diploma recipient earns. And if you are receiving a bachelor's to degree today, you will receive two to two and a half times what a high school graduate will earn over the course of a lifetime. If you're receiving a graduate degree, you can expect to earn two and a half to four times uh, what high school graduates will make over the course of a lifetime. And while that's a significant private benefit to each of you, we all benefit when we live in communities where high percentages of people who earn college degrees reside. Those areas experience lower crime rates, they attract and retain more information age businesses and industries, they have lower unemployment rates, lower health costs, improved voter participation and civic engagement, and better education for children, and higher aggregate income. Higher aggregate income uh, creates a more robust economy, an improved tax base, improved public funding and social benefits from that improved tax base, and lower costs for public assistance and incarceration. <clears throat> You're also to be congratulated on the institution that you've chosen. chosen. This one is focused on technology applications in several disciplines, and I believe that's a wise choice on your part. If we have done our jobs right, you can expect to have high degrees of subject matter proficiency, technological fluency and competence, good skills in numerical and scientific reasoning, and effective literacy and communication skills due to the good work of a competent and dedicated faculty. These skills will be necessary for you to succeed in the modern world of work, but they are not sufficient. And let me tell you a story to exemplify my, my point. Uh, as President Knowlton pointed out, I spent the bulk of my higher education career in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, as you know, is known as a high technology state. Uh, and when rankings of the new economy index com come out, Massachusetts is normally ranked number one on that indicator because of its, its robust high technology economy. We were concerned back in the late 90s, and if you remember the late 90s, uh, there was a real economic boom happening across the country, and a lot of that boom was tied to the dot-com industry, which uh, ended up not doing so well over time, but that's another story for another day. But in the late 90s, uh, there were job vacancy rates in Massachusetts in the high technology areas of more than 30% uh, for some specific occupations. So we were concerned as a public higher education system about whether we were producing enough graduates in these areas on the one hand, and whether those graduates had the skill and knowledge that the industry needed. So we conducted a review of all of our IT programs statewide, from associate degrees through PhD programs, uh, and invited 15 academics from around the country and 15 representatives of the high technology industries in Massachusetts to participate in the review. A feature of the review was a focus group that I conducted with uh, prominent human uh, relations directors from uh, the most prominent IT companies in Massachusetts, combination of hardware and software companies, but also companies like Fidelity Investments that used technology heavily in their day-to-day -day business. We wanted to know from them whether our graduates had the technical skill and proficiency that was needed to do well in those industries. Uh, we were concerned that our programs were aligned with those expectations and wanted to know more from the those people who were doing the hiring. What we got from them surprised and, and amazed me. They said, don't worry so much about the technical skills and proficiencies. We take it for granted that your graduates have the baseline uh, skills that they need to adapt to changing new, uh, new technologies as they emerge, and we're going to do the ongoing day-to-day -day training uh, that will update those students' skills and knowledge. We're quite well satisfied with the technical skills that your graduates possess. But let me tell you what we're really looking for. What we're looking for is another set of skills that very few people possess in the workplace. Let me tell you what they said. 
We want graduates who can do collaborative problem solving and decision making. We want graduates who understand social, organizational, and technological systems. Graduates who have inquiry, interpretation, and critical thinking skills. Graduates who can work with knowledge. And most importantly, too, graduates who understand individual and social responsibility, self-management, integrity, teamwork, creativity, enthusiasm for the work, who will take initiative, show leadership, understand global awareness, and appreciate diversity. And not just racial ethnic diversity, but diversity of differing thoughts, uh, thought making, ways of thinking about solving problems because that supports the collaborative problem solving and decision making that they so valued earlier. An understanding of ethics, values, and how society, government, and business works. How to cope with change and how to lead change. How to be assertive enough to get your concerns addressed and how to integrate knowledge from many sources. How to manage personal and emotional relationships. And how to innovate across disciplines, projects, and experiences. We know from research that if you possess these characteristics, fewer than about 5% of employees in the workplace possess them. And we also know that if you do possess them, you will rise quickly and thrive in, a mo in the modern workplace. Well, let me tell you that I have violated a basic principle of speech making with my long list of attributes. I suffer no illusion about whether you'll remember anything from a commencement speech that was delivered in December of 2009. So let me leave you with just three points because I've got a little bit of a shot that you remember uh, one of these. Who you are matters at least as much as what you know. And that leads to a principle of integrity. I've often said, don't listen to what people say, watch what they do. Because the essence of integrity is the alignment between the two. If we have done our jobs right, we will have imparted a joy of continuous and lifelong learning and a desire for continuous self-improvement along the lines that I discussed. We call this commencement because it is the beginning of this process where you can build on your current skills to become a better professional and a better person. I leave you with those thoughts and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Warner, for agreeing to travel here today and for sharing those thoughts with our graduates and the people gathered here this morning. I am now pleased to introduce the DSU Concert Choir under the direction of Barbara Haig and accompanied by Carolyn Goldammer to perform the piece I mentioned earlier, The Journey. to 
Thank you to the concert choir for that selection today. Um, I'm Cecilia Whitmire. I'm the academic, excuse me, vice president of academic affairs. It's my pleasure to now call upon a member of the graduating class, Vicki Lynn Call, to speak to us on behalf of the graduates. Vicki, if you could please come forward. Vicki is graduating summa cum laude with a double major in computer graphic design and multimedia web development. She's a member of Kappa Sigma Iota and Phi Eta Sigma Honor Societies. She's been on the President's honor, Academic Honors List for the last four years. She's been a member of the volleyball team for five years, including three years as, as captain of the team. She's earned the Dakota Athletic Conference, the DAC Conference's Scholar Athlete Honors for four years. And last year, she was recognized by the NAIA as an academic All-American athlete. Dakota State awarded Vicki the Champion of Character Award and the DSU Outstanding Artist Award at the 2009 Honors Banquet. So please welcome Vicki Call. Good morning. On behalf of Dakota State University graduating class of 2009, I'd like to welcome family, friends, and faculty to the 2009 Fall Commencement Ceremony. When I first received the invitation to speak today, I was extremely honored. I tried to brainstorm a few, of I, a few ideas of what I could talk about. But then I remembered all the sayings and quotes that DSU head volleyball coach, Amy Wienhoff, had printed and put into our volleyball notebooks at the beginning of the season. I started paging through those quotes, and I found one I thought was very fitting for today's commencement. As we become college graduates and take the next big step into our lives, either into the working world or going on to further our education. Now normally when we think of graduation and being a senior, we reminisce about all the things that we've learned in the past few years in school. But I found a piece titled, The 11 Rules of Life Fiction, 
which talks about a few important things that we don't necessarily learn during our years in school. These rules are found originally in a book by Charles J. Sykes, but they were also once given in a speech by Bill Gates, the chairman of Microsoft. The 11 rules of life fiction. Rule number one, life is not fair. The sooner you learn that, the better. As a college student, life is definitely not fair when you are forced to take an 8 a.m. class or write that 10-page research paper for Dr. Richardson. However, Dr. Knowlton stressed to us over and over that taking that 8 a.m. class will not kill us. Rather, getting up at 8 a.m. would instead make you a better person, and so would writing that research paper. Rule number two, the world won't care about your self-esteem. The world will expect you to accomplish something before you can feel good. Rule number three, you will not make $60,000 a year right out of college. You won't be a vice president with a fancy car and a car phone until you have actually earned both. Rule number four, if you think your teacher is tough, just wait until you get a boss. Rule number five, flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity. Your grandparents had a different word for burger flipping, and they called it opportunity. Rule number six, if you mess up, it's not your parents' fault. So don't whine about your mistakes, but instead try to learn from them. Number seven, before you were born, your parents were not as boring as they are now. They got that way from changing your diapers, paying your bills, cleaning your clothes, and listening to you talk about how cool you are. <laughs> Rule number eight, school may have done away with winners and losers, but life has not. In some schools, they have abolished failing grades, and they'll give you as many times as you want to get the right answer. However, this doesn't bear the slightest resemblance to anything in life. Rule number nine, life is not divided into semesters. You don't get summers off, and very few employers are interested in helping you find yourself. Rule number 10, television is not real life. In real life, people actually have to leave the coffee shop and go to jobs. And finally, rule number 11, my personal favorite. Be nice to nerds. Chances are you'll end up working for, working for one eventually. As a DSU student especially, you felt that you were lucky if you sat next to one of those, quote, nerds in Visual Basic class. Somehow they knew how to write all the code for your assignments before you even knew what a button was or how to put it on your form. Throughout our lives, we never stop learning from the people around us. We are the seniors here today, but tomorrow we will be the freshmen of the world or of grad school. Those 11 rules may cause a laugh or a smile, but there is a lot of truth in them. As much as we hate to admit it, Maybe our parents weren't trying to punish us when they made us clean our rooms, do our homework, or get summer jobs. And maybe our teachers weren't trying to punish us when they made us give presentations, work in those group projects, and hand in assignments on time. They have lived and they have learned, and they were only trying to prepare us for what, we would, for what they knew would be coming as we graduate from college. So finally, I would like to thank all of our family, friends, faculty, and staff who have helped us get to this graduation stage today. We could not have done it without your knowledge, friendship, and support throughout the years. Congratulations to the DSU Fall Graduating Class of 2009, and I wish you good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, Vicki. As the president of the university and also a father who has a student in the university, I can appreciate several of her comments this morning. The quality of education on any campus depends on the faculty. Dakota State is particularly blessed to have a faculty who are recognized widely for their innovation and their willingness to take on new challenges. They are also a faculty who care deeply about their students and the quality of the education they experience while here. I now ask that the current faculty here today to please stand and be acknowledged for all the support they have provided to students during this educational process and for the dedication they bring to their te teaching. Faculty, please stand and be recognized. Degrees are authorized by the South Dakota Board of Regents. We are pleased that Regent Dean Krogman of Brookings was able to join us 
to authorize these degrees. Regent Krogman, the faculty of Dakota State University, have determined that these candidates comprising the 126th graduating class have or will complete all requirements for the degree indicated. I am pleased to concur in the recommendation of the faculty and present these candidates to the Board of Regents for the awarding of degrees. Thank you, Dr. Knowlton. On behalf of the Board of Regents, we would also like to offer our congratulations to the students and their families and, and also thank the faculty for what they do. The faculty is probably uh, as important as anything in the success that you're going to enjoy uh, in the future. I heard a commencement speech once and it was entitled, What Am I Going to Do to Be Happy? And I thought that was kind of odd because you're just starting. But then I remembered sitting up in the audience when our oldest son graduated and thinking, get a job and make us both happy. <laughs> Speaking of jobs, which has been mentioned several times today, it, it is tougher out there, but you should be assured that you do have something to offer before you do an interview. Let me tell you what business knows about you today. They know that you will be to work on time. They know that you've had to prioritize your time and your task. They know that you've had some tough assignments and quitting wasn't an option. They also know that you don't have all the answers, but you have an idea where to look. So you do have an advantage. It is tougher out there getting jobs, but at the same time, the percentages haven't changed. That is, there is a need for 20% more students that are degreed in the next five years. Uh, it's been stalled a little bit probably because of retirements, but uh, that are being postponed because of the economy. But good luck to you all. We appreciate everything that you have done in supporting the university. And as you leave the university, don't think you're going to be forgotten. There are three groups that are going to keep track of you. That's the alumni, the foundation, and the IRS. <laughs> and they're all going to want some money from you. And hopefully, <laughs> my wish is that you can contribute to all of them. Dr. Knowlton, by the authority given to the Board of Regents, by the people of South Dakota, I hereby authorize you to confer the appropriate degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities there too. Dr. Nolan. I now call upon several individuals to assist me with the awarding of diplomas. I ask that these persons rise and be recognized. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Dr. Cecilia Whitmire, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Omar al Gayar, Dean of Graduate Studies and Research. Dr. Carrie Forbes Boyd, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Tom Halverson, Dean, the College of Business and Information Systems. Dr. Judy Dittman, Dean of the College of Education. Dr. Mark Hawks, Graduate Program Coordinator for the College of Education. Ms. Sandy Anderson, the Registrar. Ms. Jennifer Meese, the Graduate Programs Assistant. And the Student Marshals, Sean Amen and Jordan Hsu. Please recognize their contributions to this event. <laughs> the registrar and graduate programs assistant will please bring the graduates forward to receive their diplomas. Will the candidates, will the candidates Will the candidates for the Master and Master of Science in Education degrees please rise and come forward?
in the College of Business and Information Systems, Master of Science in Information Systems, Sharon K. Drews. Ryan Clark Guy. Michael L. Johnson. Seth C. Larson. <laughs> Siddharth Macharaju. Naveen Malati. Matthew D. Paulson. Mary Pearson. Venkata Suri Upadrashta. In the College of Education, Master of Science in Education and Educational Technology, Josh Entringer. Katie Rose Dervas. Douglas Wilson Lee. Nicholas Martin Podoroski. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees please rise and come forward by row?
for the College of Arts and Sciences, Carrie Elizabeth Bonine. Katherine Ann Fairder, cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Jordahl. Vicki Lynn Call, summa cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie C. Prezun Twilliger. For the College of Business and Information Systems, Daniel A. Dirks, summa cum laude. Trisha Mary Eining. Anne Elizabeth Yerke. LaDana Lamp. Andrea Lynn Larson. Tyler Scott Olson. <laughs> Stephanie A. Redlin. <laughs> Brett Sampson. <laughs> Alicia Ruth Shamber. Cum laude. Eric L. Smart. Amber Joy Vandervliet, magna cum laude. Benjamin James Walker. For the College of Education, Sarah Janelle Anderson. Aaron Philip Allward. Brittany K. Beckett. Matthew T. Burpee. Cameron H. Dean. Holly Faye Glover, cum laude. Matthew L. Eiler, magna cum laude. Samantha Marie Cost. Casey Joe Krogman, magna cum laude. Rebecca A. Miles, magna cum laude. J. Oberholzer Carney. Sandra Ann Petrie. Jeffrey M. Savas. Michelle Tracy Semler, cum laude. Britta Sue Streff. Jennifer Jean Weber.
Will the candidates for the associate degrees please rise and come forward? For the College of Arts and Sciences, Jill Fay Werning. For the College of Business and Information Systems, Emily Nelson. Laura Ann Shannon. Will the graduates please rise. By the authority vested in me by the South Dakota Board of Regents, I hereby confer upon each of you the degrees to which you're entitled and all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. You may move your tassels. Please be seated. Members of the Dakota State University fall gradu graduating class, we are proud of your accomplishments. I invite the parents, families, and friends, members of the faculty, and honored guests to join me in applauding one more time enthusiastically your success. It is now my pleasure to call upon Lauren Larson, General Manager and Vice President of Sales for KJM Radio of Madison. Lauren currently serves as Vice President of the Dakota State University Alumni Association, and he will welcome our graduates as alumni of the university. Dear to do, congratulations, mission accomplished. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Dakota State University Alumni Association. On behalf of our growing um, organization, you will now join an elite group of over 12,000 alumni worldwide. You're the newest and most connected graduates in DSU history. As you spread your wings to pursue personal and business goals, we invite you to send us emails. Join the alum, uh, alumni group on Facebook. Keep us informed on your location, your successes, and always keep Dakota State in your circle. The Alumni Association invites you to become an active part and take part in the events the Alumni Association has to offer in Madison, the state of South Dakota, and communities across the nation. I challenge you to become an advocate of your alma mater and always remember your roots. Without further ado, I officially induct each of you into the Dakota State University Alumni Association. Congratulations, best wishes on your future, and keep daring to do. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of Dakota State University, I want to thank you for attending this fall commencement. Again, my congratulations to the graduates on your accomplishments and my personal best wishes to, for your future plans. We invite you to join your graduate and the faculty at the Dakota Prairie Playhouse, which is just across the street, for punch, coffee, and cake in recognition of today's graduates. Graduates of DSU, you have joined thousands of DSU alumni who have crossed this stage before you. Many of those alumni are in the audience today in support of you and your accomplishments. I would ask that any DSU alumni who are present with us today to please stand and be recognized and remain standing. Please stand any DSU alumni.
please stay standing because now to conclude this commencement we ask um, first that the graduates and the newest alumni of DSU stand and join this group. Please stand graduates. Now to conclude this commencement, we ask that the entire audience rise for the singing of the alma mater led by the DSU Concert Choir, followed by the retiring of the colors by the Madison Police Department. The words to the alma mater are found on the back cover of your program. Thank you. 